you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'd like to speak to you on the subject tonight of forever His. Forever His. And I hope we understand that the word forever means forever. <laughs> okay? That means it never ends. Never ends. All right? Forever His. Uh, one of the Baptist doctrines that we believe in is security of the believer. And, you know, most people say once saved, always saved. Uh, but I like to add a little phrase in it too. Once saved, truly saved, always saved. Because the Bible teaches there are false professions of faith. Okay? There are false professions of faith. Matter of fact, I made two of them. Uh, one when I was five years old and one when I was 14. Uh, I wanted... And knew I needed to be saved, but uh, I truly did not get saved till I was uh, 22 years old. And the great thing about the security of the believer is that we are forever His. Father, thank you for the night, and God, just thank you for this promise that we're looking at tonight. Oh, Lord, it really is some of my favorite scripture uh, in the Word of God. And God, I pray that it would encourage us tonight in the faith. God, I know there are people that doubt their salvation, and God, I pray that you would just give them the assurance tonight that everything's okay, if it's okay. And God, I know Satan wants to uh, lie to us, uh, tell us we're not, and Lord, just uh, keep us down. But God, I pray that through God's word tonight, uh, we will have that assurance. And Lord, I, I pray when we go to bed tonight, uh, Lord, we'll have a smile on our face and just uh, a grin on our face also, knowing that we are forever His. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Romans 8, starting in verse 28, I want to give you three things here, three things on forever His. Number one, God has chosen us. If you are His, He has chosen you. You didn't wake up one day and said, you know, I think I'll be saved today. The Holy Spirit has to prick your heart. The Holy Spirit has to to deal with you, the Word of God says. Number two, God is for us. God is for us. And I know we have a lot of people for us, a lot of people praying for us, uh, but when you think God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is on your side, folks, we're, we're not going to lose. I got news for you. We're going to win. We're going to win. And number three, God loves and keeps us. We know how much He loves us, but here's the deal about keeps us. If he has the power to save you, I promise you, he has the power to keep you. To keep you. Romans 8, 26, likewise. No, no, 28. <laughs> went, went there. We know, and we know that all things work together for good uh, to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. I think one of the most asked questions I get uh, in, well, Two, two questions. One deals with the will of God. Okay, how do I know the will of God? But that one, or maybe this one, I get asked more than that. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why? And folks, I'm just telling you, I think when we get to heaven, it's really not going to matter. Once we get inside, it's a perfect place. We not Because I've had many people say, well, I'm going to ask God this, I'm, I'm going to ask God that. Folks, I think we're going to be so enthralled with heaven, so the majestic part of that, I'm just telling you, it's going to be awesome. But here's the deal. It's life, folks. It's life cycle. It's things happen. And this is the verse we cling to when bad things happen to us. Folks, it happens to everybody, just different kinds of things, tragic things, heartbreaking things. And there's two purposes that, that are seen in this verse. For our good. You say, how can it be our good? Folks, do you tell me that God is for bad? He wants, you know, he, he, he's just doing this to punish you? I don't believe that, folks. All right, look at all the Old Testament characters. Look at the New Testament characters. I mean, look at Paul we're studying right now and all he had to go through. So he does it for our good, to make us stronger, to depend on him more. 1 Corinthians says, we hurt so that we can help 
the hurting. So the first purpose is our good, and the second purpose is our glory. And if we miss the first one, we will, uh, his glory, God's glory. If we miss the first one, uh, we won't do the second one, okay? And everything is for our good and his glory. Verse 29, for whom he foreknew, look at this word, he also predestined. Predestined means he chose you. You are chosen of God before the foundation of the world. Ephesians 1 says, he chose you to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among the many brethren. Why? Why? Why is he molded in us? Why do these things happen? Okay, let me sum it up in this word. So we will be more like Jesus. Think of everything Jesus went through. Man, you know the story. You know how people hated him, how people called him out, how the persecution, I mean, you know the cross. We just went through Easter and all of that, okay? And I'm telling you, when those things happen, uh, it's like a diamond, you know? Uh, diamonds uncut. Uh, you, have to, you have to shave off sides. You have to, you know, use, you have to use tools. You have to get things to make it a perfect diamond. And folks, God is working on us and his purpose in every, everything in life. Folks, good and bad, everything in life is to make us more like Jesus. And if we never had a problem, I'm just telling you, we would be more like ourselves, but more like Jesus. Verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined, there's that word again, that means you were chosen. These he also called. That's what chosen is. He called he wrote your name down. He wrote your name down. He called these. He also justified. How does he justify that? With his own blood, he justified you. Okay? You cannot stand before God before uh, you were saved and, and be justified. Okay? He justified you. He paid for you. And whom he justified, he also glorified. Man, folks, I cannot wait to get that new body. Can you imagine that body that's prepared for heaven? Right now, Steve and I are on a diet, and I'm just telling you, I, I, I don't even like the word diet. <laughs> even when my doctor said a few months ago, Mike, let me give you two words, diet and exercise. But do you realize flesh and blood will not enter the kingdom of God? You will be perfect. Folks, I, that, I have a hard time grasping that because I'm not sure there's ever, well, I can probably attest, there's, Lori could probably testify, I don't know that you've ever been that way. <laughs> Think about that. But I'm telling you, folks, whom he justified, he also glorified. Glorified. Hold your finger there and go to Acts chapter 13 with me. I want you to see a couple of scriptures on being chosen. Acts chapter 13, just one verse, verse 48. Acts 13, 48. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And we remember what happened. Uh, you know, uh, Paul and, and Peter, they, you know, they, they had this meeting with the Jerusalem church and all this, and, and basically they were saying, listen, folks, Gentiles can be saved too. Folks, everyone, everywhere needs Christ. Red, yellow, black, and white, they need Christ. All right? Jesus died for everyone. Now look at this. And as many has been appointed to eternal life, believed. Folks, that's being, if you're appointed, he has chosen you. He chose you before the foundation of the world, and he called you. He called you to salvation. When he called you, he justified you. And when he justified you, you will be glorified, all right? Angelic, angelic, think of that. 2 Thessalonians 2, go with me to 2 Thessalonians 2. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation. Folks, if there's just one scripture that says that, it's true. 
I've already told you Ephesians 1. We looked at Acts, and now we see here three times he's saying, listen, I chose you. Remember on the playground? Think about this, folks. When they were dividing teams up to play kickball, you know, looking back, the, the, the people, and, and, and I started doing this when I was a youth minister because I saw this happen all the time, all right? It was those last people that were chosen felt bad, all right? What I started doing, you know, when I divide teams, I would start with the worst athletes, and I would choose them first, all right? Why? Because God chose them folks we all have been chosen by god everyone is important to god through sanctification sanctification is that process we're in now okay it's not that i'm more saved today than i was but i act more saved than i was 10 years or i should be acting i'm in that process of 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 getting towards that sanctification process by the spirit in the belief of truth to which he called you, there's the word again, by our gospel, the gospel, for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean to us? Folks, we are God's light here on earth. We are here to shine, to shine, to show his glory, to show what Christianity is, because we have been called and chosen. Verse 15, therefore, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught, whether by word or by our epistle. So we who have been taught need to show others the light in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting consolation and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you into every good works. Folks, that goes back to why? What is the purpose for our good and for his glory? Everlasting consolation. Good hope. Folks, it's not, I, well, man, I, I hope I get to heaven. I, I hope everything, you know, is going to work out, or I, I hope I'm saved. I hope he lets me in. When I hear that, oh, I'm telling you, it just flings the door open to testimony. To say, no, listen, folks, we know so. We know so. And it says, comfort your hearts and do every good works. We get the comfort of God when we go through these things in life that hurt us deeply. But I'm telling you, everything. I heard a pastor say one time, actually it was an evangelist, what doesn't kill you is going to make you stronger. All right, what doesn't kill you is going to make you stronger. And we are chosen by God, and we are his children. So God has chosen us. Not only has he chosen us, and I'll say this, folks, as we keep going down here, and this is English is not right, but it's going to be gooder and gooder and gooder. All right, look at verse 31. God is for us. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us. Well, I know somebody who's against us, and we don't like that guy. It's Satan, folks. Okay, he is the accuser. He wants to beat you down. He wants you to doubt your salvation. He wants to tell you, man, if God loved you, he wouldn't have done that, or he wouldn't allow this. And he just put all these words in God's mouth, and it, it's not true, man. The Bible says he's a liar. Satan is a liar. All right, God is for us. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Folks, do you realize it costs God something for your salvation? His only son. Do you think it was easy to give his son? Folks, I have a son. I have a son. It's hard. I have a daughter. Either one, folks. Either one. He's saying, God knows where you are. God knows what you're going through. But God is for you. He's for you. He loves you. Look at verse 33. And who shall bring a charge against God's elect? You notice twice. He points out Satan twice. Satan, who will charge you? I guarantee you Satan will. All right. You supposed to be a Christian? Ooh, I don't think Jesus would do that. I mean, he, he'll, he'll just be all over you. It is God who justifies. Justifies, folks. Justification. 
All right? It is God that does not, not Satan. Who is he who condemns? Who condemns? It is Satan. All right? God set us free from sin, folks. He has set us free. It is Christ who died and furthermore is risen, who is even at the right hand of God. Look at this, who makes intercession for us. Even when we stumble, even when we fall, even when we are the prodigals, even when we don't do the right things, he is praying for us. The Bible tells us Jesus is praying for us. God is for us. The Holy Spirit is inside of us. Folks, I'm telling you, I hope you know who you are in Christ Jesus. All right? We are saved. We are chosen. All right? God is for us. He's on our team. I, like, I don't know how many, what's the commercial where Barkley and these little kids are on a basketball court? Anybody seen that? And Barkley, look, you know, this kid chooses somebody and, he chooses Barkley, who is nine feet taller than everybody else. And they go like that. You know, and he's, he's acting like that's a big deal. Well, folks, I'm telling you, to God, the, the, the field is level, folks. He's chosen every one of us. He loves every one of us. He doesn't love someone more than he loves you. All right? He chose you. He handpicked you. All right? First, and, and one more thing about the intercession all right, that's why it's so important that we keep in tune with God. Because when He is interceding for us, the Holy Spirit takes that message to us. I hope, I hope you understand that. Folks, I cannot tell you how important your prayer life is. Your prayer life is so important because that is the communication point uh, for you and God. God is praying for you. Jesus is praying for you. And he, they get their message to you by the Holy Spirit and by prayer. All right? And I got, <laughs> if I want somebody interceding for me, for instance, if I needed a lawyer, and I think God would be a good one, don't you? He's interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? There's a question. And then he gives a list. Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, Will any of these separate us from the love of God? You know it's, the answer is no. None of these things. He's saying these things will happen. Folks, I'm telling you, tribulation is coming. It's coming. I keep warning you. I keep telling you, we are going to be persecuted as it goes on and on. But does God love us any less? Should we fear that? No. Why? God is for us. For us. As it is written all day long, for your sake we are killed all day long. And remember the bi biblical part of that. Folks, the Romans were some of the cruelest people at all. They literally would take Christians and wrap them in cloth and pour oil on them and use them for human torches. We are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep as the slaughter. But folks, God is in us. He is with us. He is for us. Jesus intercedes from us. And he is for us. 2 Corinthians 4. Go with me to 2 Corinthians 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. All right? What's that? That's our bodies. That's, that's here. We're here. We're living. We're breathing. Okay? Do you realize if you got up today, you have something to praise the Lord about? Amen. There's folks that didn't get up today, folks. There's people that either died in their sleep or they felt so bad they never got out of bed. All right? This, God gives up these bodies, again, for His glory and for His service, that the excellence of the power of God uh, may be of God and not of us. Look, we, we have to remember, folks, it's not about me. This world, I don't get up, and I, I understand we need to take care of ourselves. I understand we need to feed ourselves. I understand we need to educate ourselves. But it's not about us. It is about God. We are hard-pressed on every side. I think you would agree with that, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, 
but not despaired. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. No matter what happens in life, you are still a child of God. He is still uh, your heavenly Father. And none of these things can take that away from you. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Folks, I'm telling you, from the day Jesus was born, he was walking towards Calvary. Walking towards Calvary. All right. He even quoted, you know, I don't even have a house to sleep in. I don't even have a pillow to lay my head on. He was hungry and he'd go through a field and get fruit or he'd, you know, uh, he walked everywhere. You just look at scripture. He walked everywhere. He was tired. He had emotions. Okay. He wept over the city of Jerusalem. All right. He got tired of fighting the scribes and the Pharisees and the religious of the day. He grew weary, the physical part of his body. And then again, Calvary, think of all that he went through. I promise you, we will never go through in our lifetime what he went through. That's what he's talking about, the dying body of Jesus Christ. He went all the way through there so that he could convince you that you can do it. We're going to get knocked down, folks. Let me give you the key. When you get knocked down, get up. Get up. Get up. Why? Because he's for us. Folks, I'm telling you, Hebrews 12 says those great cloud of witnesses that are up there. Man, you think about those heroes of our faith, of Moses and David and Paul and Peter and Elijah and all them. And you think of all that they went through, folks. I'm telling you, Elijah was in a battle. You talk about a spiritual battle, 650 to 1. But you know, truthfully, it wasn't 650 to 1. It was 650 to 4. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And a miracle happened, folks. You don't put water on wood and see fire. You don't do it. Folks, God is for you. He's saying, man, when you get tired, just keep going. When you get down, just keep believing. When things aren't going your way, don't throw in the towel. Don't throw it in. And it says, for we, verse 11, who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. People have asked me, are you ever going to slow down? Listen, folks, here's how I see it. We've got all of heaven to rest. All of heaven to rest. If I need to make another phone call, I'm going to make it. If I need to make another visit, I'm going to make it. If I need to write another sermon, I'm going to write another sermon. Why? We've got all. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about rest. I'm just telling you, God, just wire some people that way. All right? When I was young, I'm telling you, if I would have been in grade school and it was in this day, I would have been on Redland or one of those deals just to calm me down. And so what I'm saying is, no matter how busy your schedule is, no matter what's going on in your life, sometimes I'm telling you, there's a lot thrown at us. Folks, God, through Jesus Christ's examples, told us and showed us, you can do it. You can do it. So then death is working in us. We're going to die, but life is in you. What is our life? Folks, our life is Jesus. I get up, why? Because of Jesus. I go to church, why? Because of Jesus. I read my Bible, why? Because of Jesus. I give, why? Because of Jesus. All right? Our life is not about me. It's not about me. It's about him, and our life is in him. So God has chosen us. God is for us. And here we go. God loves us and keeps us. Look at uh, Romans chapter 8, the, the last part. Yet, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You realize that the writer could have wrote, we are conquerors? He just could have said, hey, man, we're conquerors. No, he says, we are more than conquerors. All right, through Jesus Christ. We are conquerors. 
through him that loved us. There's that word loved us, gave his life for us, gave his son for us. No matter what we do, he loves us. He will never stop loving you. You cannot do anything that he would not love you. He loves you unconditionally. Verse 38, for I'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities. Have you noticed two lists in all this? Two lists. He, he told us earlier, we, you, know, we, you know, the list, count the slaughter and all that thing. There's two lists, distress, uh, persecution, famine, nakedness, tribulation. Then he starts in on, you know, death will not stop us. Life, angels, principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Folks, I'm telling you, the Antichrist and the devil and all, they got some crazy things coming on when the tribulation is coming. Things. And he's saying none of that stops God from loving you. None of that will separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Nor height, nor depth. You folks afraid to fly? I'm just telling you folks, we should not fear anything. Why? Because God is for us. He is for us. Nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And here's the key, folks. We can damage our fellowship with God. Okay? Sin will damage our fellowship with God. Praise God for 1 John 1, 9. All right, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But listen to me, nothing, nothing can change our relationship with God. My son is Jonathan Michael Franklin. He will always be my son. I don't care what he does. I don't care where he goes. I don't care what happens. He will always be my son. My daughter is Sarah Jane Ann Franklin. She will always be my daughter. And folks, you will always be God's child. Think about that, folks. He will not abandon you. The Bible says he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Yes, you can hurt the fellowship, folks, but you cannot hurt the relationship. He chose you. He is for you. He loves you and he keeps you. John 15, verse 13, just a couple of more scriptures. John 15, 13. The Bible says, greater love has no man than this than to lay down their lives for his friends. You are a friend of God. You are a child of God. God proved his love for you when he laid down Jesus' life for you. John 10, John 10, 27. And if you ever get in a discussion with somebody, you need to write this scripture down about security of the believer. John 10, John 10, 27. The Bible says, my sheep, this is Jesus' words, hear my voice, and I know them. I know them. And I told you, uh, and I give this illustration before, in the old days, they would have the sheep pens in the middle of the city to protect the sheep uh, from, from the wolves and all the things that are outside there. And they'd come in at night, and they'd put all these sheep, all the shepherds would be outside, and they'd put all them in one pen. And then when they got ready to go in the morning, when that shepherd started talking, those sheep would hear that shepherd's voice and they would all fall out of there. Just the sheep that knew that shepherd's voice. Folks, I'm telling you, he knows his sheep. We are his sheep. And they follow, he knows them. He, they follow me. And I give them eternal life. Eternal is forever. It's not forever if it's not eternal. Eternal life, and they shall never perish. Folks, look at every word in the Bible. Every word in the Bible. We do not believe you can sin away your salvation. 
We don't. You sin, yes. We all sin. We all fall short of the glory of God. But it doesn't mean that we're not saved. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my Father's hand. I love this illustration. When you get saved, Jesus wraps his hand around you. God wraps his hand around you. The Holy Spirit seals you. And for you not to be saved, they would have to break the power of the Holy Spirit. They would have to take off the hand of Jesus, and they'd have to take off the hand of God. Folks, nobody can do that. Nobody's more powerful than God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Verse 29, my Father who has given them to me is greater than all. <laughs> when we were kids, my dad can beat your dad up. <laughs> hey, I got a heavenly father that can take care of you, all right? You don't scare me. You do not scare me. A guy put a gun in my face. I know people don't believe this, but I'm just telling you, I'm not going to cower and get on my knees and be like, oh, don't kill me, don't kill me. You're going to threaten me with heaven? Come on now, folks. I'm just telling you, I am not scared. I'm not, and, and to be not scared, you, you have to settle the issue on death. Let me give you 100%. 100% chance if you live long enough, you are going to die. Okay, 100%. It's just a matter of how. All right, my Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. He said it twice for emphasis. I and my Father are one. One last. 2 Corinthians, I'm done. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 4, we're back in chapter 4, but look at verse 16. Boy, this is good stuff. This is good stuff. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Well, I just want to quit. I, I just don't feel, I don't think anybody loves me. I don't, I don't, I don't. Do not lose heart. Do not throw in the towel. Even though our outward man is perishing. I've noticed the older they get, the more I'm perishing. <laughs> okay. The more things don't work, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. How do we get renewed? Through prayer and Bible study, folks. Prayer in the Word is the renewal. Our light affliction. This is Paul speaking. Shipwrecked, left for dead, stoned. Uh, you know, all these things, Paul. He, he calls his life a light affliction. All right? which is but for a moment, is working for us far more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. Remember what I said when we are in Romans 8, 28? It is for our good, and it is for his glory. All right, bad things are going to happen. But man, you've got to rise above it. You have, to, you have to realize, man, even if I have to tie a knot at the end of the rope and hang on, just hang on, help is on the way. Verse 18, while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Folks, I hope you understand, and I know you know this, there's a spiritual world and there's a physical world. And most of this world lives in the physical world. They live for here and now. But there's things that happen in our life, while we can't see it right now, God is saying, we will see it later on. For the things which are seen are temporary but the things which are not seen are eternal. Father, Father, thank you. Thank you that we have freedom. God, we can be free from fear. We can be free from judgment. We can be free from doubt. We can be free from discouragement. And we can even be free from death. Oh, I understand we all have to die. But God, we will live forever. And God, I thank you that the God who saves us is certainly the God who keeps us. God, thank you for protecting us. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you that one day you are going to bring us home safely. God, I can't wait for that day. Coming home. Coming home. Lord, we're coming home. And God, I thank you that we will always be your children. And God, I pray that we would just uh, remember these words and believe these words and, and just, you know, have the intestinal fortitude, the determination 
to finish strong. God, I know, I know you want us to finish strong. And God, I pray that that be so in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.